Well, we'll continue a bit today with angels, altars, Holy Spirit fire in a new era. The principles in the Bible are written for our learning, Romans 15 and verse 4 says. They, they teach us, they warn us, they prepare us for what's happening or what could happen. They prepare us to respond. And there's a passage in the book of Acts after Pentecost, after that great outpouring, that I believe is speaking to today's ecclesia and is calling for a response so we can win a very great victory, which I believe we are going to do. It also warns us against passivity. It also, it, many today, even our, some of our leaders, they just want to remain passive for some crazy reason. But pretending the, the battle isn't, isn't there or isn't real doesn't help us win. It simply reveals an attitude that causes continued mayhem. And sadly, the actions of far too many of our, our leaders is feckless. It's irresponsible. Look the other way and let the mayhem continue. But looking the other way simply causes bondage to increase simply causes more evil. It simply causes more loss of freedom. And it allows inroads for, demon, uh, for demons to activate. It allows inroads for vile affections and demented thinking. God put this passage of Scripture in the book of Acts for a very good reason. It is for our learning. And it isn't talked about very much, perhaps, you have never heard a message on this before. If so, how fortunate you are today. But I've been drawn to this passage. I won't tell you how I got here because it's too long, but it wasn't where I was intending to go today at all. But Holy Spirit guided me, and once I got there, He gave me a download for our times. Because... Um, I believe that we are moving into a war time in, in the body of Christ. We're moving into a very strategic war cycle for this nation that is going to be very, very intense up until the midterm elections. We've got to understand that. We've got to understand the great hope that God's word gives to us. Also, we must engage in the warfare and win it in Jesus' name. Also, we must engage as born-again citizens in our actions, in our words, in our stand for Christ, and even in our voting. Our confidence must be in God's word, not the propaganda. Now, I want to start today by reading some verses in 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 11, Paul writes, Do not be ignorant of hell's strategies, lest Satan gain an advantage. In other words, somebody's got to talk about hell's strategies. The first ecclesia apostles paid attention to hell's strategies. The King James Version reads, We are not ignorant of his devices. The Amplified Bible uh, reads, To keep Satan from getting an advantage over us, we are, are not ignorant of his wiles and his intentions. So hell does have intentions for us. It has intentions for America. New Living Translation so Satan will not outsmart us. We are familiar with his evil schemes. Message Bible. We don't want to unwittingly give Satan an opening for more mischief 
We're not oblivious to his ways. In other words, we don't live in la-la land. We're not oblivious. We, we pay attention and respond. We pay attention and we respond. Don't be ignorant of hell's strategies, but, but don't fear them either. Don't dread them. Understand his scheming tactics. Then go on offense. Use God's word. Get your hopes up. Get your faith up. And win it with your authority. Respond and win it. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 27 says this. Give no place to the devil. The Amplified, leave no room or foothold for the devil. Give no opportunity to him. Obviously today I want to talk about a strategy of hell so we're not ignorant of it and so he doesn't gain an advantage and so that his scheme backfires. We are now in a transitioning time into times and seasons of times or years of time. Don't just think ev an event. This is an extended season of time that will be dramatically different from what has been. We are accelerating into a new era. It will be the greatest era the Godhead has ever planned as far as kingdom of God expansion is concerned. It is a Holy Spirit planned era of Christ Jesus, spiritual government on the earth that affects natural world governments. We are accelerating now into what I call a super Pentecost era, which will produce the greatest harvest ever in history. Now, for sure, hell is fighting this tooth and nail. It is stirring up false religion, demon doctrines, false ideologies, people groups, and natural world governments and natural world leaders to vex the church, to vex the ecclesia, and try to get them to back off of Holy Spirit's new era. This is exactly what happened after the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 12 now, verse 1, and it says, Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain in the church, certain of the church. Herod, of course, represented natural government. In other words, government decided to vex or harass the church of Jesus Christ. A political body decided it was going to vex the ecclesia, the people of God. The New Living Translation reads, about that time, King Herod Agrippa began to persecute some believers in the church. Again, Agrippa's government persecuted the church. Agrippa did not do this by himself. No, he used governors to help him. Felix was one of them. Uh, Portius Festus was one of them. The government of Damasca, uh, Damascus under King Artemis was one of them. He persecuted Paul, arrested him falsely and beat, and beat him. He, he used governors. He also used um, threats to back them down. He also used false witnesses. He had mock trials or hoax trials. He had false imprisonments. He used false imprisonment to imprison Christians for some things that they did not do. He used unjust laws that were anti-Christ to come against them. 
He also used nominal religion. He used the Sanhedrin, the Jewish religious body of the time, to come against them, threaten them, and have them beaten as well. Traditional religion absolutely hated the ecclesia. He uses this to vex the church. The Amplified Bible reads, About that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to afflict and oppress and torment some who belong to the church assembly. The Message Bible, it gives us the details pretty clearly. Acts 12, now verse 1 through 11. That's when King Herod got it into his head to go after some of the church members. He murdered James, John's brother. In other words, people died as a result of this. They also lost their businesses. They lost their income. They were excommunicated or censored. When he saw how much it raised his popularity ratings with the Jews, he arrested Peter. All this during Passover week, mind you. And had him thrown in jail, putting four squads or four soldiers each to guard him. He was planning a public lynching after Passover. All the time that Peter was under heavy guard in the jailhouse, the church prayed for him most strenuously. In other words, when Peter was arrested, the ecclesia gathered at the altar to do something about it. They gathered out the altar to overrule what was taking place. And they began to pray for his deliverance. They began to make decrees concerning his freedom, concerning his deliverance. All this time, he's under heavy guard. Then the time came <clears throat> for Herod to bring him out for the kill. That night, even though shackled to two soldiers, one on either side, he was handcuffed to a soldier on his left and a soldier on his right. But Peter slept like a baby, and there were guards at the door keeping their eyes on the place. Herod was taking no chances. Suddenly, there was an angel at Peter's side, and light flooded the room. The angel shook Peter and got him up. Hurry! The handcuffs fell off of his wrists. The angel said, get dressed, put your shoes on. Peter did it. Then grab your coat and let's get out of here. Peter followed him, but didn't believe it was really an angel. He thought he was dreaming. Past the first guard and then the second, and they came to an iron gate that led into the city. And it swung before them on its own accord. Probably another angel was opening the gates. He saw one. There could have been many of angels, and probably so, because handcuffs were falling off, gates were opening, things supernaturally were happening. And they were out on the streets then, free as a breeze. At the first intersection, the angel left him going his own way. That's when Peter realized it was no dream. I can't believe it. This really happened. The master sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's vicious little product, production and the spectacle the Jewish mob was looking forward to. Again, the Jewish mob was led by the Sanhedrin, or the religious traditional body of the time that was feckless and irresponsible. What a passage of Scripture this is when we really dive into it. God sent an angel, perhaps a squad of angels, to, rec to rescue Peter from government's little production from its spectacle of evil plans and from the spectacle of nominal in name only religion. 
Our own government is at this time also creating quite a spectacle. Everything that I just mentioned to you that happened in Acts is now happening in our times. From false imprisonment to loss of business to threats to evil threatenings, using anti-biblical laws, false accusations, an unjust justice system, unfailed, uh, unfair trials that are mere hoaxes, governors who oppress our, our liberties in Christ and our liberties in our nation, a political body, a nominal religion, and a king or national leader that America doesn't call king or prime minister, we call him president. It's stunning to see the parallel, stunning. The Amplified Bible says he sent an angel to deliver them from Herod's hands and what he expected to do to them. New Living Translation. The Lord sent his angels and saved from what Herod and the leaders planned to do. What did the church do? They prayed. What did the, what did the ecclesia do? They gathered at the altar to pray, and they earnestly prayed, and they earnestly decreed the word of the Lord from that altar. What did the saints do? They, they prayed and they decreed their faith in a God who hears prayer. I don't know what they decreed, but it was probably something like this. You are not going to kill that apostle. You are not going to keep him bound. I don't know how God's going to do it, but he's big enough to get him out of that, uh, that prison cell. And we decree in the name of Jesus, the efforts of you and your diabolical plans will come to naught. Loose him and let him go. They gathered at the altar to decree what God said. Now it says, about that time the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain in the church. About what time? Obviously a certain time is emphasized here. Uh, the word time is the Greek word kairos, and kairos means strategic time, or it means a specific time. It's the word for, for due season. There's a specific time or tipping point time or moment that is being referenced here. About this time, what time is he talking about? Well, at that time, the church was now beginning to accelerate into a new era on its mission that Holy Spirit had planned. A a plan that included prophetic words, and prophetic words were now coming to their moment, especially one from a prophet named Joel. And he had prophesied the Pentecost outpouring. The church, the church was now born. The spiritual heirs were now being activated as Holy Spirit is released from heaven. Pentecost had happened. And the power of God was now uh, upon them. The apostolic and the prophetic time had activated. 3,000 souls were won to Christ in one day. And then another day, 5,000 were, were saved. And then the numbers, it says, just begin to multiply. Blind eyes were open. Even the dead <clears throat> had been raised. Leprosy was healed. Notable miracles had begun to happen. The lame were running through, was running through the, the temple, and, and they were leaping with joy and dancing. The 12 apostles had begun to do the work. 
and the ministry of Jesus. Though once frightened and though once fearful, once intimidated, they now had become very bold spokesmen for Jesus. And men and women from all nations were beginning to give their heart to King Jesus. Samaria and Judea had been evangelized and the Gentiles were even now receiving Jesus. In the heart of Asia Minor, at a place called Antioch, new, uh, new believers were coining a different word. And that word was Christian. They said, that's who we are. We're, we're, we're Christians. We're, uh, we're Christ-like ones. That's what we should call ourselves. And Acts eleven twenty six says, the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. So without question, the first ecclesia is alive and very well at about this time. It's thriving, it's successful, it's prospering, it's growing. Well, about that time, government said, we've got to vex these people. We've got to vex the church. About that time, government that had been infiltrated by an antichrist agenda said, we've got to deal with this and we've got to vex the church. A, a culture of evil said the same. We've got to vex Christianity. Their talk of freedom, their talk of liberty, their talk of grace, and their God-given rights is jeopardizing our manipulative control. The word vex, it's the Greek word kakos. And it means to injure. It means to exasperate. It means to become malicious. It means to threaten or to willfully harm. And that's the connotation, on purpose. Willfully do this. So after Pentecost, government leaders of the time, zealous ideologues of the time, a cancel culture of the time, said we must willfully exasperate the Christians. We've got to be malicious. We've got to get in their way and we've got to stop them. We have got to slow down their movement. We, we've got to stop their cultural reformations. We can't allow these biblical standards. Rather, we want to legalize our fallen nature. We want to make our fallen nature legal. We want to change the laws so that our fallen nature is, is legal and implement, through law, oppression. We must, on purpose, vex them. Similar to the godlessness against Christ and His kingdom in our times. It is, again, stunningly clear. But the good news is, and there is, there is some very, very good news. That's not where the story ends, and it's not even close. The story doesn't end there. The ecclesia responded. They engaged. They confronted. They went to work. And an amazing supernatural turn comes to hell's schemings. It did not work. It didn't work. It backfired. Actually, it backfired big time. It didn't work then, and it's not going to work now. Why? Because God had sent the game changer. He had sent Holy Spirit. 
commander of the armies of, of heaven. Lord Sabaoth was with them and in them. God sent Holy Spirit fire. He sent Holy Spirit to guide. He sent a regenerating power from heaven to fill them, then to fill them again, then to fill them again, and then to fill them again, and then to refill them again, an unending supply. And then he sent his angels to help rescue them from the evil spectacle crazy leaders in the nation was causing. He sent his angels to help them stop government's dumb little production. Rather than stopping them or even slowing them down, the opposite happened. The persecution caused them to spread the kingdom of Christ even further. Fresh fire came upon them from heaven, and fresh winds blew on that fire, spreading it everywhere. Galatia suddenly caught fire. Corinth suddenly caught fire with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Colossae caught fire. Philippi caught fire. Ephesus caught fire. Thessalonica caught fire. Rome even caught fire with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Change started happening everywhere. The governments, the governments of this world fomenting the powers of darkness discovered you can't contain the fire of Pentecost. You cannot contain true Christianity. You can't contain the true gospel. You can't contain the heirs of God and the joint heirs of Christ Jesus. It didn't work in the book of Acts and it's not going to work today. And the more that you try the more we're going to prosper. The more you try, the more victories we're going to rack up. The more you try, the greater Christ's kingdom is going to expand. Your attempt is going to be like trying to dam up Niagara Falls with toothpicks. The river of God can't be dammed up. The river of God cannot be contained by government or any other entity. Herod's regimes of our time cannot dam back the river of God. No, the river of God blows the dams away. It floods with a surge of power. And demonic de debris is washed away. We are accelerating into a super Pentecost. And the river of God is going to surge all over the earth. Hell's not going to stop it. The glory of God is going to surge and it is going to be seen. His glory is going to be seen in all of the earth and the ecclesia is going to ride that surge. The Holy Ghost fire, it cannot be quenched. Rather, it's going to flame brighter and brighter and brighter, spreading into an, an unstoppable movement, spreading into a worldwide revival. Ohio, it's going to catch fire with the gospel of King Jesus. Indiana will catch fire, and hell's not going to stop it. Indiana will catch fire with the gospel of King Jesus. Kentucky's going to catch fire. West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Tennessee, Georgia, North and South Dakota, Mississippi, Florida, the, the Louisiana, Texas, Alabama, Oklahoma, Colorado, Alaska, Canada's going to catch fire. South Africa, Australia, Great Britain. Ireland, Scotland, Wales, Germany, Brazil, Guatemala, Mexico. Hell will not put this fire out. Not going to happen. All flesh are going to feel this one. As Peter prophesies on the day of Pentecost. And it will come to pass in the last days. Says God. 
I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. My men servants and maid servants, they're going to prophesy. I'm going to show wonders in the heavens, signs on the earth beneath, and everyone that calls on the name of the Lord is going to be saved. As the ecclesia engages the battle against hell, as it rises to rule and reign in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit will supply power from heaven, and angels accompanying a super Pentecost will assist us to overcome anti-Christ or anti-government productions. Dumb dramas. And government spectacles of evil that come against the people of God. So yes, there's going to be great war but greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Our God always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Engage the battle. When we engage, we win. Give no place to the devil. Do not be ignorant of his strategies. Engage it with prayer. Engage it with decrees. Engage it with your faith. Gather at your altars and prevail against it. About that time. Well, about that time, Holy Spirit said, Angels, go break them free. And that is where I believe we are at this moment. Go break confinement. Go break their prisons open. Go open the city gates for them to enter in. Go help deal with hell's spectacle. Go help them stand against government interference, against unjust treatment, against false accusations against the vexing. We also are in right now a Kairos moment, a strategic moment, a moment where we must engage. Something is due. We are in a, a due season. We must discern what is happening right in front of our eyes. We must uh, we must understand that war has been declared against us. Spiritual battle. Spiritual battles must be fought and they must be won. We've got to discern this moment and begin to discern a hope that the Bible provides for us, the hope that God's Word reveals that a super Pentecost is beginning to accelerate. Multiple divisions of angels with millions in each division are accompanying Holy Spirit in a super Pentecost. They're accompanying for a reason. They are moving by His hands, His directions, in all directions, as the numbers are on a clock, like we saw last, last week. It is a Kairos time. Remember the vision of the Lord. It's unfolding right now. Thousands of these mighty warriors are now being deployed because before or towards 12 o'clock on the earth clock. Thousands of them are being deployed towards 1 o'clock on the earth clock. Thousands more towards two. Thousands more towards three. Thousands more be before four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven o'clock. A super, a super Pentecost is baptizing us in power to prevail and activating powerful branches of heaven's spiritual 
angel armies to fight alongside of us in all directions wherever we may be. They're going to be everywhere. These mighty ones are engaging with the ecclesia, fueled by the prayers and by the, the decrees of the ecclesia. Remember, angels attend prayer meetings. From last week, remember, Holy Spirit is always accompanied by massive amounts of angel armies. They appear in Acts chapter 2 as flames of fire. They are ministering from the glory fire of God. We saw that a host of, of Michael's angels are accompanying him, Holy Spirit. They are, they are war angels. They are angels of war that assist us in battle everywhere on the planet, according to the, the word of the Lord, everywhere. Michael and his war angels are there to assist us. That would mean right here. Right here, we have mighty warriors ready to assist us to engage this warfare. We also saw uh, that a host of Gabriel's warriors are also now activated. They assist the communication of strategies to the body of Christ. That too is everywhere, and that is here. Gabriel will be activating. He has activated and now his angels will be activating the strategies of Holy Spirit for this time, for this region. Dramatic insight is coming our way. And of course, a host of glory angels. In the vision the Lord gave me, he explained that glory angels came with Holy Spirit in the upper room Pentecost. And then he said, they helped the advancement of new eras, outpourings, and glory surges on the earth. This due season, this due season for us involves a new era, fresh outpourings, and sudden glory surges of fresh fire from heaven. Fresh fire-like presence. There are going to be times when the presence of God just surges among us. And we're going to be overwhelmed by that kind of glory. Sudden glory surges are coming to infuse us with the power of heaven. To make the, the mightiest stand that the ecclesia has, has ever made. And now, according to what God says, it's happening. We're moving into that era. We're moving into days of rapid advancement. Days of dramatic change. Days of the king's manifest glory among us. Hell has been fighting and it's going to fight. It will attempt... To vex, but it's not going to work because overwhelming power, overwhelming assistance is being given to the saints of the Most High. Pentecost in the book of Acts, it was absolutely awesome. There's no doubt about it. We've preached it for 2,000 years plus, it was awesome. But understand, it is promised to us again at a far greater level. And this moment is prophesying the great message of Acts chapter 12. The ecclesia won. It won. It didn't lose. It prophesies that it won. It won the victory. It didn't lose. It didn't back down. It won. Against all of it, it won. It prophesies angels are ministering fresh fire as Holy Spirit pours it upon the king's ecclesia. Angels are opening portals over the king's ecclesia. 
signs, wonders, and miracles will now amp up. They are planned. Surges of glory are beginning to accelerate. History is going to be changed as revival fires begin to flame from our altars. Fireballs of glory, like comets out of heaven, are now going to explode on hallowed places of worship. The ecclesia won. They didn't lose. They won. We got to get this in our thinking. Yes, hell threw the basket at them. They threw the sink at them. Government did all they could, but the ecclesia won. It didn't lose. It didn't lose. They threw everything at them. They won. They won. And like the remnant believers in Acts, we too must gather at our altars, praying and decreeing against the tactics of hell, welcoming the Holy Spirit at levels He wants to be at, not what we want Him at. We too must make ourselves available for fresh fire. We too must engage the battle at our altars and win against hell. I'm going to talk about one of the ways we can do that next week. It involves a dream that God gave to me this past week. It was very specific. It was kind of simple, but very specific concerning presenting ourselves before the Lord but not just presenting ourselves before the Lord, presenting our families before the Lord, our kids. I'll talk about that strategy next week. But remnant warriors who have been building and tending altars, they themselves being the living sacrifices. Many of us have sacrificed greatly to see this activation on the earth. Many of us are veterans of spiritual battles, veterans of the spiritual war. But we're being filled again and filled again with Holy Spirit enablement. And apostolic boldness will be revealed and the ministry of the, the remnant is going to arise in that authority and that boldness like the world has never seen in this, the day of his power. So we cannot fear hell's schemes. We cannot fear government or leaders in any way, shape, or form, no matter what they say, no matter what they do. No, we be filled and refilled with the Holy Spirit. We're going to engage the enemies of our kingdom with superior authority in Jesus' name, and we will win an amazing victory. The promise of the Father is going to, to deliver us. Hell doesn't stand a chance. The tide of victory is going to turn. Huge winds are before us. Holy Spirit didn't come to lose. We know that. Heaven is prophesying. Ecclesia, engage, you'll win. Engage, Ecclesia, you'll win. Engage, you'll win. Engage the battle, you'll win. Engage the spiritual war, you'll win. Use your authority, you'll win. Bind the dumb spe spectacles that are before your eyes. Bind them. You'll win. Don't fear, you'll win. You're going to win. You're going to win. We've got to understand we are about to win one of the biggest battles for planet Earth that has ever been in history. The Word of God prophesies it. The ecclesia doesn't lose, it wins. Now, 
singers and musicians come and I'm going to I'm going to pray some things yes they'll probably be pretty bold but I feel like I feel like we must engage today and engage these next two weeks very very strategically like for you stand if you would please Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Engage your faith. Don't be a spectator. Engage right now. Father, based upon your word and the scripture that you took me to this week that I wasn't preparing for but you did anyway based upon that we declare that this ecclesia and the ecclesias of the king will now rise to engage the spiritual war of hell and government that on purpose has come against the people of God and against the Christians and against the true church. We will not look the other way. We will enter into this war season and we will battle with the fierce authority of King Jesus. And even here at the start of this war season that you are declaring, we declare at the start we win. We're going to win this. We bind the spectacles of darkness, the spectacle of demon powers, the spectacle of natural government that on purpose has come against you, your people. And we will engage it. And we will see the turn. We will see the victory. We will win. We bind the powers of hell behind this vile, vexing plan, strategy of hell. We bind it in Jesus' name. And we declare the power of the kingdom of God cannot be contained. We declare the power of Pentecost will just amp up higher and will just win bigger victories. We declare... The tide of victory will turn. We declare, Holy Spirit is coming to fill us and fill us and fill us and fill us and fill us again. We declare, your glory is going to surge in this house, surge in Ohio, surge around the world. We're going to win this in Jesus' name. We declare our agreement with the prophetic word of Holy Scripture. We win. Hell schemes, you will not prevail. We declare, Lord, that fire is coming upon the altars of your ecclesia. Fire is coming that is going to rise up in and through the New Testament church in ways never seen before. And we declare in this next three or four months that fire is going to burn brighter than it ever has in history. We declare surges of your glory will be greater than any other months ever in history. We declare what you say. We declare, Lord, we declare that Holy Spirit is now releasing fresh wind upon those fires, and it's going to spread in these next few months like this world didn't even know possible, and most of the church didn't even know was possible. Let the Wind of Holy Ghost come upon fresh fire and spread it all over this world in these next four months or so. We declare 
Hell will not stop this. History is going to change. Great victories are going to not just be proclaimed, but evidentially won. In Jesus' name. Supernatural enablement is going to infuse the body of Christ now. All over. All over the nations, all over the states, everywhere. Fireballs of glory are going to hit those altars. We declare this next few months now, we are going to see our God's mighty hand in ways that have never been seen before. We declare it. You did it in the book of Acts, and you are prophesying now. Ecclesia, engage, you'll win. I'm with you. Holy Spirit's with you. He's in you. He's with you. Portals are open over you. We declare that the portals of glory are open over the king's ecclesia all over the world and all over the states, everywhere. It's now happening. We declare it. Dramatic change is going to be seen locally, regionally, and everywhere in these next few months. We declare, Lord, July, August, September, October, and November, the movement of the living God will accelerate all over the world. And your plan is going to be implemented. And the diabolical plans of hell are going to be thwarted as your ecclesia now engages. We declare overwhelming power, overwhelming assistance, and thousands and thousands of angels are now activating to assist us. Everything will change. A new era, fresh outpouring, and sudden glory surges. We declare, Lord, that the apostles and the prophets of our time will rise as the apostles and the prophets in the book of Acts. We will not be contained. The river of God will not be dammed up. It's going to surge all over the world. You cannot dam it up. We declare, Lord, that river is going to flow. It's going to flow through the states. It's going to flow through the nations. And it's going to overwhelm the tactics of hell, the spectacle of hell and its devices. We declare, Lord, Michael and his angels will engage with this house. They will engage with the, the body of Christ. Dramatic supernatural victories will happen. Supernatural deliverance will come. Handcuffs are just going to break. Prisons are going to just open by the power of the living God. Mm -hmm. We declare angels of communication are coming. We declare, Lord, that the angels of glory are amping up thousands of them throughout this region, over this house. Lord, the angels that I have seen camped around about this place are now activating, spinning, and opening the portals of glory to surge here. We declare, Lord, welcome surges of glory. Come, surge through this house. This is your moment, Lord. This is a moment that you have planned this is a Kairos moment that you have designed on this earth. We declare in Jesus' name our willingness to engage at our altars, our willingness to engage and pray, our willingness to decree what you say, and our willingness to stare hell in the face and say, we win. We win. We're going to beat you. You are not going to win. We will win. We will beat you. We will beat your efforts. We're going to beat it down, and we're going to win. And we're going to engage in that victory like hell 
has never seen before in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.